Guys, welcome back to Victory TV presented by Canva. I'm your host, Jake Barkadesh, and always joined by Melbourne Victory Women's Captain, Kayla Morrison. Kayla, a massive week for the club. The girls have got it all on the line against Adelaide in the first week of finals, and the boys are off to Japan to qualify for the Champions League. It is a nail-biting week of games. It's a win and go on or a lose and go home situation. So I think there's a lot on the line. It's what it's all about. Well, let's get the show on the road. It's a big women's focus this week as defender Brooke Hendricks and head coach Jeff Hopkins join us in studio to discuss the season and this week's final. We recap last night's draw over the Mariners as we get the latest from the camp ahead of their departure to Japan. And fan favourite Raul Baina joins us from Hong Kong as he reflects on his time at the club. Kayla, another cracker tonight. Oh, I love Victory TV when it's based around the women and based around <laughs> International Women's League. So I think it'll be probably the best show yet. <laughs> we can't wait. Well, first things first, let's look back at the highlights from last night's match in Gosford as the boys picked up a point on the road against the Mariners. On we go. Rojas for victory. Marco Rojas. And it was going to creep in that bottom corner before Birigetti got a hand to it. It's going to be Jake Brimmer to deliver the corner. Towards the near post. Hamill got it on target, pushed away by Birigetti. Oh, Dan Hall has slipped. On a platter. Gift wrapped for Nick D'Agostino who wasn't going to miss from there. Victory lead, it's a horror moment for Daniel Hall. Rojas, first time touch from Brock, some lovely spin by D'Agostino. What a ball, they're away here, victory. It's Marco Rojas. Left it up towards Arrenia. It's knocked on by Muller on the spin. Well, Kayla, obviously not the result we wanted, but good to see Daggers back on the score sheet before our trip to Japan. There's no better time than right now to be in form, so I think it's looking really good for victory. Back him in to get another in the coming week. Well, with the boys resting up at home before their flight to Japan on Friday, we caught up with Brendan Hamill after their return to Melbourne earlier this afternoon. Brendan, you've got a lot of experience in the Asian Champions League, having won it in 2014 with Western Sydney. What do you think of when uh, you hear Champions League football? Uh, it's exciting. Um, it's a competition that um, you know every club in the A League wants to be a part of, and you know we're fortunate enough through our, our cup run and our hard work in pre-season to to have a chance at um, entering the group stages. Um, so it's exciting. It's exciting as a club, and Melbourne Victory have, 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 have been a part of many. Uh, ACL campaigns in, in, in previous years and um, you know rightly so they're a huge club so we're looking to add to that um, a big trip um, an exciting trip to Japan to Whistle Kobe and uh, you know the boys are, are, are ready to go. And take us back to 2014 you were part of the only Australian team that, that's won it what kind of uh, what were the keys to that run and how does an Australian team really make a run in this in this league? I haven't uh, I haven't really looked back on that um, and, and thought about that whole experience too much. Um, but I know we had a, a top team, we had a, a top mentality, um, very disciplined. Um, you know, everyone was on the same page, everyone knew their job and no matter what was thrown at us, uh, no matter the obstacles, uh, we stuck together and we found a way. And um, Asia's, uh, it's a tough place, uh, but, but that's a privilege. Um, so, you know, it's exciting that, um, you know, we're, we're in this in this position and uh, we need to, to grab it with, with both hands. We can't uh, uh, go there scared. We have to, you know, have full belief and, and we do. Uh, once we step on that plane, we'll be going there with the mentality and the attitude to, to go and get a, a job done. And we're facing a seriously decent uh, side in their own home pitch over in Japan. What are the keys to really holding it together against a side that maybe is a quality that you don't always face, um, you know, in the normal league? I suppose it's, uh, uh, you know, we've got to focus on ourselves. Obviously, we're going to do our homework on, on uh, Vissel Kobe. Um, you know, not that it's like any other match day. Um, it's a little bit different to the A-League, but we, we still sort of go through our, our regular routine with, with analysing us with the ball, us without the ball, um, you know, physically, mentally, you know, preparing as a, 
as a team and as individuals. And um, yeah, I suppose it's just going back to that mindset of, of going over there and believing that you know we can go over there and, and, and get a job done. And um, you know the belief is high in this group, so um, you know looking forward to it. And the team's really started to click and flow again in the last uh, two or three games. What do you think has changed that uh, got the team looking looking so good again? Yeah, it's, I think it's three games unbeaten, um, two wins and a draw. Um, I think it's 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 it's. Uh, I might sound like a, a broken record, but you know, focusing on us, focusing on our football, um, day in day out, not looking too far ahead, taking it game by game, and um, you know, we've got to continue this winning mentality. Um, you know, we've got a lot of winners and, and a lot of experienced players and a lot of young boys uh, coming through pushing. Um, so it's, it's a good position, it's a good squad to be in, um, you know, fighting for positions and uh, that's always, you know, keeping things healthy. And just on your own form, your own season at Victory, you become a real key player. How have you rated your own performance so far? Listen, I just, uh, I don't focus too much on myself. I'm, um, you know, focusing on uh, just doing my job for the team. Um, not looking too far ahead, game by game, um, in this season. That's sort of you know uh, unprecedented times. Um, so I'm just um, you know looking to do my bit for the team and and play my role as best I can. That's it. And just lastly on the trip, are you a fan of Japanese cuisine? Have you been there before? Uh, I've been there a couple of times. Um, you know I think we'll be in strict lockdown uh, protocols over there. So. Not sure what the cuisine is going to be like, but you know, uh, we're just going to have to get on with it. Um, you know, an obstacle we're going to have to overcome, and you know, hopefully, we can go over there and, and put in a good performance. Thank you to Brendan for his time today, and Kayla. It's great to see Brendan injury free and looking to get back to his old form, being one of the best defenders in the league. Absolutely, it's so good seeing him out on the pitch. He's not only a good soccer player, but an amazing human. So I'm glad to see him out there, absolutely dominating. Now, I know you've had a chat to some of the boys about their upcoming trip, Champions League trip, first international trip for, for the club for a while. What's their feeling like? Oh, I think it's just a really, really positive feeling, not only because they're excited to be going on an international trip together, but it's an opportunity to qualify for the Champions League. And I think, you know, they've got a really good shot at it. And I think that they're all feeling really positive. Absolutely pumped for that clash. Well, it's all eyes on the women, though, this week as Jeff Hopkins' side looks to cause another finals boil over as they head to Adelaide to take on the Reds in the minor semifinal at Cooper Stadium. A season that's seen plenty of ups and downs, but it all comes down to the next three matches as the side looks to replicate their incredible run last season to defend their title. And we've been lucky enough to be joined by the head coach himself ahead of their Adelaide trip. Jeff, welcome to Victory TV. Cheers, thanks for having me. Well, how have the preparations been this week for the girls? They've been really good, actually. We've, uh, we've obviously not had great preparation over the last three or four weeks without uh, having too much time to train, but uh, it's good to have a bit of time out on the uh, training field. Uh, the players have, are very, very bright. There's a lot of energy within the group and they've trained with real good quality and intensity. So I'm quite, uh, I'm quite happy as things are going at the moment. Fantastic. Now, we've spoken to some of your girls around you know, what it's been like for them with the congested season, the on and off periods. What's it been like for you as a manager dealing with that? Look, it's, it, i I got to admit it's been pretty tough. Um, yeah, look, it's been very, very tough for the uh, for the players themselves, but obviously for the for the staff as well. There's a huge a huge um, increase in workload, and uh, I most probably just want to say well done to our staff. They've been <laughs> yeah. absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Everything I've asked of them, they've done, and 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 a little bit more. So, uh, in terms of that, uh, the staff have been fantastic, and you know, if they're doing their job or if we're doing our jobs well, it makes it a lot easier for the players and. Uh, in terms of the play and stuff, they've uh, they've had to really dig deep, um, something that we weren't prepared for at the beginning of the season, and most probably the last few games we lacked a bit of energy, um, but that's okay because we're uh, <laughs> we're we're now come out of that period, um, and we've know we know that we can get through it. Uh, we're going to have a lot of prep good preparation for this game this weekend, and yeah, there's uh, just looking at. The way things went last year, there's one or two similarities that I'm, I'm quite looking forward to. Which leads us perfectly into our next question. Do you see some similarities between last year's season and this year's season? Yeah, most definitely. I think uh, the way we started the season, um, we started the season reasonably well last year and this very well this year. Had a big roadblock with a couple of big defeats uh, and then came 
really strong out of that. Um, I think uh, last year then we ended up having to go to Sydney for a premiership playoff, which we lost. So we lost our last game. Uh, then had to go then up to up to Queensland to play uh, the Raw, uh, who had just previously beaten us six nil, and we we put six past them. Wow. Uh, so you, you had you look at this this year now we we went over to uh, Adelaide at the end of a very very tough period of games for us, lost the game three nil, and now we head back there this weekend to a you know, to play a, a good side that I must be full of confidence, but. Um, are in uncharted territory with their first uh, their first um, appearance in the final. So yeah, look, does look very similar to last year, and we're we're hoping and we're we're planning on the same sort of result on the on Sunday. Absolutely. I know the belief that you've got in us. Jake doesn't. <laughs> Neither oh, does you know. It all sounds the like fans. there's a lot of belief. <laughs> Could you tell everyone you know the type of belief you see in not only us but you know, in the team and the hope that you have for us? Yeah, look, uh, I think um, there's mostly a couple of games this year that where I didn't, I looked at the players, the Sydney FC game at home, uh, played, I think, three midweek games. I think it was the fifth or the sixth game on the spin we played. And at half time, uh, I kind of looked around and wasn't sure what we what we were going to get from the players um similar um and we went out in the second half and it just the players just find find the energy find the way to do it from somewhere we even went two goals down uh in that second half and again on the on the side we're thinking do we now plan for the weekend the game's dead or do we throw on a couple of positive subs and try and win this game, knowing that we've got a game in two days. And yeah, the belief that we've got shows the way that we try and keep going to right to the end because these players just don't know when they're beaten. They don't know when they're beaten. They don't know when, they, when or whenever to give up. So yeah, look, it's, uh, it's just uh, as a coach to know that your team has got that much belief in themselves um, it's just a, uh, uh, just it's a fantastic thing to have, and uh, look, I'm sure that we'll see that again on the weekend in these one-off games. That's where players with that sort of belief and that sort of attitude really come to the fore. So, um, Jeff, you're going to make me want to put on my boots and play for you the way after <laughs> well, I that. I certainly but, uh, do. I'm, I'm on. <laughs> but no, we've got the hard-hitting questions here at Victory TV, and, and <laughs> one of the things I'm sure all the Victory TV staff want to know is what it's like dealing with Kayla. We know she's a bit of a prima donna, but how is it, how is it for you? No, look, on a serious note, we, uh, we have missed her this year. Uh, her leadership is, is important, um, and... I guess we work reasonably, uh, pretty closely. She's part of the leadership group. Uh, she's our, she's still our club captain, and we uh, we we still talk quite regularly. Um, in terms of her, uh, I think she knows how I feel about her. <laughs> she's uh, look the way that she's dealt with the injury this year. Um, I say I've I've had one or two long term injuries in in the past, and definitely didn't deal with it as the way that she's done it. Uh, um, she's always bright, cheery, puts the team first, uh, everything you want from a captain. So, yeah, look, uh, I've got nothing but um, good things to say about her for yeah, sure. Yeah, love to get in. Yeah, she's a star. <laughs> she's a star. Well, Jeff, thank you for joining us on the show and obviously good luck for Sunday in, in the big clash. Great. I'm really looking forward to it so much. Can't <laughs> wait for it to come. Kayla, great to have Jeff here, someone who's been a big part of your footballing journey. A massive part. He's the one who recruited me to Victory and a big reason of why I've signed two more years at Victory is to hopefully, you know, continue to be coached by him and, you know, learn all the centre-back tips and tricks he's got for me. Handy, handy advice, I'm sure. Well, a change of pace now and we've seen how Wordle has taken over our daily routines, but it was time to see if Paige Zoyas and Maya Markovsky have what it takes to work together to solve the dilemma with our special word master, Ivan Kalava. Thank you. Yeah, okay, start off with our custom word. I reckon he would, I think we need to get in his head a bit. What would he pick? Like a tape or something? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, do audio. Next one, next one. Well, we, if we do audio, there's already an A, not in it. So, 
Mm. Okay, make something with the yeah. words. And I what about own. drums? Drums, nice. Yes. Very good. Do you like the drums? Do I like the drums? Yeah. I had a cousin who was playing them. Nightmare. Nightmare? Yeah, true. We have a neighbor that plays the drums. I can do a fair effort. Ooh, okay. Coins. So there's a C in it, but it's not in that place. Jokes. Jokes, yeah. No, no. Jokes. No, no. What is it? What else goes with the C? Like a H, C. but not within it. True. Unless it could be... Socks. It's socks. It's so socks. Is it socks? <laughs> oh, I knew it! I knew good it! Good stuff! Thank you. That was pretty good. It was an easy one. It was an easy one. <laughs> Oh, Kayla, I'm questioning my own ability at Word <laughs> after watching that. The girls got that pretty quickly. Yeah, I do have to say, I think a lot of time would lapse <laughs> <laughs> if you were to play Word That Wordle. must be Word of the Day if you're saying that. <laughs> I think maybe it is. <laughs> oh, there we go. Well, our preview of the big women's final continues as we welcome one of the latest additions to the women's squad on Victory TV. Brooke Hendricks, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Have you caught this Wordle banter? Have you had any experiences with the game itself? Um... A little bit. My mom's really involved in it and she's trying to get me to start, but I'm kind of working my way in with the girls on the way trips. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling it out. I don't know yet. I'm not convinced. Yeah, either, either am I to be honest, okay. but she's trying to change me. But anyway, how has your time been at the club since you've been here? Um, it's been pretty good. I haven't really had too much time to, you know, explore too much because we've been playing like a million games in a row. Um, <laughs> but that's been fun too. I came to play, so that's been good. Um, I really liked it so far. Could you give us a little quick rundown of what your soccer playing history is? Okay, quick rundown. <laughs> um, I've traveled a lot. So I played in America in college, and then I took like a year and a half off to do, finish my degree. Then I went to uh, Holland for some trials. Then I went to Scotland, and I made that team and played there for a little bit. Then I went to Switzerland, um, Iceland, Italy, and England. And then America, and then now here. <laughs> okay, that is a lot. Those frequent yeah. flyers yeah. are good. Yeah, exactly. Getting a lot of points. <laughs> Where does the Australian league's level rank amongst that? Um, I feel like this question is always kind of tough, just because there's every country kind of has like their own style of play and how they play. Yeah. Um, and it's always been good in their, its own way, right? I think the Australian league is really good as far as like physicality and passion and drive and wanting to be here. Um, I think the only difference is that there's a lot of younger players in this league, yeah. which is which is great. It's um, it's good to see it growing and getting more people in and players in. Mm -hmm. So I think it's up there. I just think it's just getting more experience, and I think it's yeah. going to be great. Yeah, I would have to agree. So really good answer. Thank you. Um, I know we've had a conversation. You asked me something when I when you first came and said, Kayla, I need some help with the toilets in Australia because they're a little yeah. bit different than America. Can you explain that conversation to the people? Okay, this is actually a really confusing subject for Americans because yes. we have one flusher. It doesn't matter what you do in the bathroom, you're just gonna push the same one. Um, here, apparently there's different, different types of flushes. I'm unsure, I didn't realize that was a thing. So there's like the one and then the two or the two, I don't know if you push two I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. I'm just playing with I'm the I'm inclined to agree with the Americans. Right? I mean, one button seems easier than two. Right? Right? But it's not as good for the environment. It's <laughs> okay, the issue, right. which is typical. But now I'm ruining it, I think, because I push all three sometimes. Like, I just... <laughs> so you're doing I don't so know. much <laughs> <laughs> I'm making up for the slack that everyone else is having. Yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> to get a little more serious, what are the feelings, the vibes headed into Adelaide this weekend? Um, I think they're really good, actually. Everyone's kind of... Uh, I wouldn't say bitter, but we're a little bit upset with how the last time went uh, against them. We were really tired, we had a ton of games and we just don't want it to be an excuse. And we want to be, we're ready to go, we've had some rest and we're ready to take it to them. Yeah. Now, obviously you've come in as an injury replacement and the season's nearing ahead, obviously for the, the pointy end of the season, which is why we're glad you're here. But have you got any plans for the future or are thinking about that space at all? Um, yeah, I think you know, always gotta think about the future, especially <laughs> yeah. when the season's almost done here. Um, I'm hoping to go back to America see what I can do there, hopefully get a chance. Um, if not, I have a British passport actually, so 
possibly England as well. But I would like to come back here if I could. Definitely. Well, hopefully yeah. we'll see you back in the Vichy mm -hmm. shirt soon. But um, thank you for coming into the studio, for giving us your time. And obviously, good luck for Sunday as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Well, a big thank you to Brooke for joining us, Kayla, as we head into the analysis bunker with Systema to look at Brooke's influence this season. Brooke's experience has come to the forefront during her time at Victory, and she's even picked up a souvenir goal with this effort against Newcastle a few weeks back. A real strong centre box header as she found the back of the net. And with experience, the ability to read the game sets her apart, being able to cut this chance out. And in the next clip, she does the same to read the pass out of defence to stifle the Canberra attack and cause the turnover. Again, another great cutout opens the game to let us out of this press as we combine to get out of traffic. Well, let's have a look at Brooke's season stats and she showed she's a force in the air, winning 81% of her aerial duels. But as Kayla mentioned, her ability to read the game comes out in her block and interception numbers. So thank you to System Up for taking us into the analysis bunker. The girls are back to throw each other under the bus as we find out the player most likely to consider themselves an influencer and who also is controlling the tunes in the dressing room. Male. I think Kyra is an aspiring influencer, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, between Kyra and Maya, maybe. <laughs> Definitely Maya Markovsky. <laughs> Kayla, sorry. <laughs> And Maya, she's TikTok famous. Follow her, follow her on TikTok. I don't know why I've copped this one so much. I'm going to say Casey. She posts on Instagram more than I do. <laughs> At the moment, probably Kayla. <laughs> she's doing all these interviews, so... <laughs> yeah, she's a bit of an influencer. I post on social media. You saw her cowboy hat. <laughs> she's an influencer. <laughs> Oh, there's always this bloody wear flickers for sure. Maya, Maisels, Bunge. We kind of have a team playlist and I get stitched up half the time, so maybe me. Maisels. Maisels. Um, Maisels. Maya Markovsky. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'd say Maisels or, or Jaden too, depending on, <laughs> depending on the day. Mindy's on it and then Mazel's will come on it with some terrible stuff, so we'll kick it off again. <laughs> Kayla, your name seems to keep popping up every week on these games. Obviously, an influence. You don't even post. <laughs> <laughs> I told the girls that exactly. I'm never on Instagram. I don't post. But I think it's just because I'm on Victory TV. They may be a little jealous and yeah. <laughs> give me that influencer role. And my, my costume seems to be popping up quite a bit as well. Yes. But Anyway, another person who made themselves famous with the Victory Faceful with their personality on and off the field is the man who joins us now all the way from Asia, former Victory midfielder, Raul Buena. Raul, thank you for joining Victory TV. Hi, happy to, to be with you. Can, you. can you just tell us where you are at the moment? I am in Hong Kong. How's it been playing in Hong Kong? I, I am happy here in general. Um, and today we are leaving to Thailand uh, to prepare the ACL, um, and I hope we can we can see you guys uh, and play against Victory. <laughs> so the best of luck for <laughs> for the game, and I hope to see you soon. <laughs> well, thanks for the kind words, Raúl. I'm sure the fans will be so happy to hear from you. You only spent one season at Victory, but you quickly became a fan favorite. What do the fans at Victory mean to you? Mm, a lot. So I appreciate a lot uh, their support from first day until now, because I still receive a lot of message. And even I remember when uh, we won the, the league here, last season and um, victory was playing a game and the fan uh, started to, to to sing my my song when i played there so it was very exciting so i appreciate a lot uh, all kitchen fans yeah Sorry. i'm sure that is like so amazing and i'm sure they really appreciated your time here what was the season like as 
far as football. You finished third in the league, and you guys also got to a semi final. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted to win the the league, so but it was impossible. Uh, we try to do our best, but uh, sometimes so there is a a better opponent, so uh, we need to to congratulate them. Um, and that's all. And keep working. <laughs> do you do you have any special memories of your time in and around the club? Any special stories that you still remember to this day? I don't know. A lot. I think a lot, <laughs> but I, I I cannot say just one. It's it's true that for me, it was very difficult uh, in the beginning because the language was a big trouble for me. Uh, I couldn't, <laughs> my English now is bad, but I can understand a lot of things. I can communicate a little bit, but in that moment, it, it was the first time that I went out from Spain. So it was difficult for me a little bit, but uh, day by day, I, I was understanding a little bit more about everything and people in the club fans and uh, teammates uh, were amazing so uh, I am very happy to 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 went there when I went there and and leave this experience and play football for victory now your English is actually very good to be honest me and Kayla can understand you quite well so congratulations to you on that because I, I know <laughs> it's not easy to learn a new language but one thing I think you will remember is your goal at Melbourne Victory and I believe it was against Western Sydney Wanderers in a, in a big win. And in your position, unfortunately, we don't score too many. Uh, but do you remember the goal and, and the, the moment itself? Yeah, 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 I remember. I remember it was a cross, I control. I, I, I don't know how to say. I do like, I go to shoot, but I don't shoot. And the defender pass and I shoot and I score. So yeah, I remember <laughs> that goal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't have, I don't have too many goals for victory, so I can remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, they all count. Now, obviously, <laughs> when you came to Melbourne, not just a new club, a new city. Do you remember Melbourne, the city itself, and and what that was like? Yeah, 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 yeah. I I I love Melbourne, so I think it's a very nice city. You have everything. So uh, yes, I I I spend very good time uh, visiting the city and I enjoyed a lot. Well, Raul, thank you for giving us your time. I know you're all the way in Hong Kong preparing for a big match, but we appreciate you coming on and, and definitely a fan favourite of the club. Thank you and all the best always for you. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, Kayla, his English isn't as bad as what he said. He spoke very well, I thought. You know what? I have to agree. Australians speak really fast and sometimes <laughs> a little mumbled. So I understand why he has trouble sometimes. But other than that, I thought his English was amazing. What a lovely guy Raul is. Well, that's it for another episode of Victory TV presented by Canva. This week, we look ahead to a massive finals weekend for the girls on Sunday as they face Adelaide United on Sunday afternoon at Cooper Stadium, where you can see the match on Paramount+. Plus. And then our next men's match will be a huge Asian Champions League playoff against Vissel Kobe, the one we've all been waiting for on Tuesday night at 9pm. So stay tuned to the Melbourne Victory channels on what platform you can watch the game. And March is still looking as busy as ever with the big Melbourne derby moved to next Saturday, the 19th at Amy Park. And then it's a short turnaround to face Western United on Wednesday and the Wanderers the Sunday after. And finally, make sure you tune in to Victory TV presented by Canva on Thursday, March 24th. Kayla, it's been a pleasure. Thursday is our favourite day. Thursdays are our favourite day because it's Victory TV. But also this week, Sunday looks like a really big day for the women. Hopefully they get the win. And Tuesday, a massive day for the men. So fingers and toes crossed we can get those wins. That's it. Well, from myself, Jake Barkadesh and Kayla Morrison, it's good night.